I'm gonna answer to the question What did you learn and discover about your mind during and after the period of time and grieving? So I want to talk about what it's like for me when I divorced my ex-husband When it happened, it really broke me It, it broke my heart And how I handled it in, at this time is just basically how I handle it in every situation um, The depth and the knowledge is different now I basically accept all those emotions all of the emotions when i'm sad i cry when i'm angry i'm angry i don't try to suppress it and go oh no i don't want to think about it or oh i can't be angry no let's think about something more positive i'm not doing any of that i'm angry i'm brewing then when i'm sad i'm sad i cry i cry i cry me being broken didn't stop me from all the things that i was doing so i still had to go to work my brother was here with me at the time so making sure every day he's fed, cooking, cleaning, taking him to places and all that kind of stuff Paying bills, everything Yeah, so everything was still happening Emotionally speaking, I know that I'm sad, I know that I'm broken So I'll go home and whatever I have to do, I'll do I guided meditation about or heartbroken and stuff like that There was particular one that I was listening into every day for a bit Oh my god, I cried every time and I will do it because I'm sad obviously that's what I want to do I just do what I want to do that's what I want to do I'll do it and I do it and it'll bring me to tears every time until it doesn't or until I just don't even want to watch that video or listen in anymore and I just do it as much as it needs to come out I do it if I feel like I needed to talk to someone I reached out I talked to people back when I was younger I didn't have a lot of people actually was listening and um you know, it wasn't right people to talk to It was more that I was just talking to people Because I needed to And now I've got some people And I reach out, I talk out loud um, If not, I'll write it like this And and if I miss the person, I miss the person That person was on my mind all day I just think about that person I don't try to fight it I don't try to not think about that And try to think for something else I don't do that I just There was one dog called Mika that Shama and I decided to rehome Mika was a mom's girl too there was a lot happening at that time for us and we made the decision I made that call I didn't do much for the first couple of weeks I was yeah and I was crying every day for the first week I was crying every day and even now at times it'll come up that there's oh here's a difference yeah here's a difference with Mika whenever I miss her I'll talk about her Like there is so much fun that happened when she was here, right? And I'll talk about her Because that's what I miss So it's not really a sad feeling that way to me So oh, I miss her so I talk about it Instead of, I guess, like feeling ashamed about my decision And because of it trying to suppress it Because I am ashamed I, I, was re I got really angry at myself for a while too For making that decision uh, because it wasn't an easy decision but I accepted that I've accepted that I'm ashamed and I'm regretful for that decision so whenever yeah whenever I'll miss her I'll talk about her and that will bring shame and guilt for Shama and oftentimes he would either ignore it or oh yeah yeah that response that really guilt re guilty response but if you were to hold on to that emotion Then you're missing out on being able to share good memories about that I remember telling him about that and said look like what happened happened And we can still love her, we can still miss her, we can still have We can still be happy that we had her And talk about those memories So yeah that's what I do And even at times talking about Mika, even though that's a few years ago I still cry sometimes, really rare, but sometimes I'll cry and I'm okay with that Yeah, oh my god, yes, I miss her, you know So I think I don't really have the resistance in terms of feeling my feelings And I understand that it's not as easy as it seems But it's something that's natural to me Elaborating the feeling of feeling lighter What I mean by that is because there was so much unresolved pain that there's so much anger brewed on it, right? So my view was different For example, all my life, my view to my, towards my mom was 
understanding. It was always understanding. And then because it got to the point where it suppressed along to the point there was that much pain and that much, it led to the point of anger from suppression so much that things I started to, things that started to pop up in my head, I was looking at it from the place of resentment like oh you were doing that but you wouldn't even be able to see me that way you you will say all these things because you don't understand what you're talking about like that kind of blades right so my view was different it's like i had this it's like i had this color lens because i released that emotion but now it's not back to just or understanding or just or anger it's neutral because there's no attachment there from that emotion from the past so I, i'm now able to see for what it is now so i'm neutral um, another example that i can give is shama and i for example shama being in depression for pretty much all his life and and he was not at present for a long time because he was still living in that survival still living in that past um, trauma. Like he's really good now. We're really happy. I'm really happy with the way he is now. He's definitely getting there. Because of that pain that wasn't being resolved, if we were laying in bed, right, for example, after a long day of work, if I wanted to have a chat, blah, 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 and he's like, oh, I'm too tired now. Oh, sorry, I just want to go to bed. If I wasn't seeing it from a place of resentment and anger from this pain, then, oh, okay, yeah, you had a big day. I can go to bed, like we can talk about it tomorrow. But coming from a place of resentment looked like, all right, you have all the time and energy to play game all night. That didn't seem to be a problem. But now when I try to talk to you five minutes, it's such a big deal that you all of a sudden get so tired because of all oh, work. You see the difference? So the whole energy is different, which means that's gonna also create and amplify the anxiety around it too and you're gonna feel tension you know so the view is very different when it's coming from an anger place of resentment and once that's released and when that's resolved um, you can be completely detaching yourself from that so that you can be neutral so that you can be more at calm and then and that doesn't mean it's problem solved done deal you don't know what the future holds so whatever happens there as you go you want to make sure you maintain that and you want to make sure that you handle things that way. You only just caught up to this point, right? And you don't want to be doing that in another 10 years. So what you learn then is, okay, so when these kind of emotions arise, I need to assess it and I need to do something about it there and then so that it doesn't catch up to me like most of us dealing with childhood trauma because that's why it's so intense, right? Because it's catching up to us after so many years. So of course it's going to be more intense. So um, yeah, so that's the difference on feeling lighter. So because my view now is not a lot of anger and resentment, that means I'm less anxious and less angry being defensive, guarded, going, oh, you're doing this because of this, like, like feeling the need to protect myself. So you're more relaxed because you're just taking this as, as they come. You're, you can be more flexible again. I hope that makes sense. There's one point that I missed, uh, which I think is important. When I'm angry, I'm angry and I let that brew. And when I'm sad, I cry. When I'm excited, when I'm happy, I express all of those emotions and embrace that, right? Anger is interesting. It's something that's really close to home that I grew up with in my household. In the past, I let it brew longer than I do now. Um, what was consistent all throughout and that really helped me to where I am today is me remaining curious. So in whatever emotion that I was in, somewhat painful emotions or difficult emotions, I stay curious. So what is it that I'm actually feeling? Why am I feeling this way? And then I work around that boundary around that too. Then I put myself in the other person's shoe. And what can I learn from this? Why am I so angry? And where is this coming from? Why? Like really why? And staying curious. And whatever comes to mind, I will do it. Okay. I don't like the way I was being spoken to. Why? Why do I not like that? What do I not like about it? The way that I felt belittled. Is that about the way it was delivered or is it about the particular things that were said? Like I really try to analyze that um, 
and then what am I gonna do about this am I gonna talk to this person if that's what I feel is the best at the time I'll do it and sometimes it'll go well sometimes it won't so I've made plan your mistakes on finding the right time finding the right way to deliver the message and I've gone through a lot of trial and error but whatever happened from me taking actions on what I feel is needed I just accept it and I learn from that and then moving on to the next section moving on to the next section and yeah that's that's how I developed understanding to the point of where I am now so back then if I'm brewing on something oh my the resentment is the lens that I've got on, you know, everything else looks that way. And it's not every day kind of thing, but it was like when it's that time of the month where my emotions are all amplified or there's the same matter that's consistently being brought up. Because now that I'm aware of it and I've done something about it to do my best to detach these emotions, because I've been to this place plenty of times that emotion doesn't take over me, emotion doesn't overwhelm me. So it's faster for me to sit in that emotion and rationality together to go oh oh i'm doing that again okay let's drop it and i'm and it's that easy to be able to detach it and it's all about balance you're never gonna be you get it and that's how it's gonna be you know it's there there are gonna be times where extra things in life it's gonna add extra pressure and you might go to your usual default and then go oh shit and then come back but it's always, it still is a progress because you're always trying to make balance, you know? And, and whenever I have flaws, I keep going back to it to question myself. What is it this time? What's there this time for me to discover? Um, and I quite enjoy that process. Like all throughout the process of difficult times while embracing hard emotions, um, I think is one of the biggest things that is beneficial to me. Okay.